She stands in the prow, her form cloaked by dark robes and clinging mists. Her voluminous hood conceals her age. She could be anyone's daughter, sister, or mother. Her foothold is sure, her body steady. Through the thickening mists and fitful waters, she stands firmly in her place and ever certain of the way. She has conquered this lake and parted these mists to find her way to Avalon. Now, in service, she guides others through what appears to be the impenetrable until they too can arrive at the holy shore unaided. She is a priestess of Avalon. What you just heard was the first paragraph of the introduction to one of these books. She had my attention. Hi, I'm Olivia. I'm the Witch of Wonderlust here on YouTube and on Instagram, and today I have another book review for you. I have two books to review for you today. Both of them, as usual, are sent by The Witch's Box. The Witch's Box has a book subscription, if you don't already know, that they send you two books that are a little past the Witchcraft 101 type of things and dive a little deeper into spirituality, occult, and witchcraft. So, these books were books from May. The first book that I'm going to go through with you is Avalon Within, A Sacred Journey of Myth, Mystery, and Inner Wisdom. Both books are written by, I believe you pronounce it, Yena Tylandru. I could have totally massacred that, and I'm sorry if I did. So Avalon Within, the first book that I read, starts out with this amazing setting, very mysterious, very on the edge of this foggy lake type of vibe with nothing but nature surrounding you and it's a little chilly and you're approached by this mysterious hooded figure. Really, really interesting way to grab people's attention. Both of these books are very centered around inner work, a lot of shadow work, and a lot of reflection. You're going to find in these books multiple meditations to bring you through a beautiful visualization of each meditation cycle. Something that is heavily touched on in both of the books as well is cycles. So the meditations that she writes about, there are five specific ones. The year is broken down into cycles and there are mentions of the traditional celebrations and traditional days that match up with what many of you may know as the Wheel of the Year. It was broken down and it is described to you what that time of year looks like, what that time of year would bring, what the celebrations would look like, and more so on what piece of ourselves are we reflecting on, are we doing our inner work on during that time of year. So these are the types of books that you can read through one sitting to kind of understand where you're going. And then if you would like to, you can start at a specific time of year that you wish or wherever you are in your time of year and start the work from where you are and use these books as a guide all the way through the year. I personally really enjoy books that you can use that way because I feel like it's more of a practical application. I really like books that I can use as guides and as foundational pieces so that I can try out their form of practice almost as if they were teaching me it as I was going, rather than reading a book, somebody throwing a bunch of information at me and then saying, good luck. <laughs> so this particular book will bring you through different meditations and a whole cycle of meditations throughout your year called the Avalonian Cycle of Healing. There are five different meditations that are the big ones that you work through throughout the year. The first one is the Station of Descent. It's very much symbolic to going into the underworld and descending into what is your shadow. The second one is the Station of Confrontation. So now that you have descended into the underworld per se, you now need to confront those things that are in your shadow, bring them to light, and look at them. The third one is the Station of Emergence. So after you've confronted these things, you're going to emerge. You're going to bring them back to the light and out of the shadow. The fourth one is the Station of Resolution. This one is solving those things. So now that they're dusted off out of the shadow and into the light, 
now you can begin to resolve those things in your shadow. And the last one is the station of integration. This is bringing everything that you've learned and everything you found into full circle and weaving that all into, into the pattern of the cycle that is your life. There is a very detailed ritual on how to scry and I thought that the way that it was written was very beautiful. It was less technical than a lot of other written tutorials, I suppose, or written guides on how to scry that I've read before. It is a good amount of lore as well as a good amount of history packed into this book as well, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And there's even provided photos of specific sacred places um, that is touched on and mentioned in this book. This book isn't necessarily an easy read, but it's not a difficult read either. I do want to mention that this, this one specifically was very heavily feminine based. So if that's something that you're not really into, then I wouldn't suggest this book to you. However, that's not to say that you shouldn't read things that you don't find yourself connected to or are not really interested in, because the more information you have, the better. But um, just be aware that this is heavily based on the feminine. So that's the first book. The second book is The Mythic Moons of Avalon, Lunar and Herbal Wisdom of the Isle of Healing. So this one I found myself to like a lot more. Um, it's still very heavily cycle based, which is fine, but it's a little more practical. It's a little more folk based. There's a detailed description on how to work with the lunar cycles, what to work when. There are different recipes for lunar elixirs as well. Um, this one is laid out fairly similar to the first one. I can say that this is a pretty decent sized book compared to the other. I mean, they're not super different, but it's a little bigger. My one biggest critique with this specific book was that I do think that it could have been maybe like a half of the size. And the reason I say that is because each lunar cycle, even though there are small details for the differences of each cycle of each meditation that you can go through, it kind of felt like she copied and pasted the meditations. And I mean, you know, sometimes that might help people instead of having to flip back and find the other one or whatever. That's my own personal thing. It wasn't something that was a make or break for me. So, I mean, if, you know, I had to find something to complain about then there, I found something to complain about. There it is. These are really nice books for inner work, for shadow work, for reflection. This is something that is very much a personal journey and something that you would want to journal through. I think this one was my favorite one over the two. However, I loved the meditation one in these. The meditations were just so beautifully written. And if I could find this on audiobook, I would probably use the audiobook as a guided meditation to bring me through those journeys in Avalon. That would be really cool, but it wasn't anything that really hit home for me personally. Um, but that's not to say that if you are feeling called to get one of these books and further your journey in your inner work and your inner reflection, which is always, always important, even though this didn't call to me, something else might call to me. If this is calling to you, definitely check these books out. So those are my book reviews. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, best of luck, be kind to each other, and may your gods treat you as you've treated others. Bye.